Okay, the so next item on the agenda is the Chief Financial Officer's Report. Uh, Tim, are you still here? Oh, no. so, Tim, so, Tim I, I know you covered some of your report. Why don't you just fill us in on the rest? Okay, our, our total revenue for the month was just under $15 million. Um, I highlighted a number of these, these major items. Uh, we did receive the life safety bonds, $6.5 million uh, during the month of August. That's considered revenue. And the transfer from working cash uh, to capital projects of $2 million is, is revenue in the capital projects fund. So those two items accounted for $8.5 million out of the $15 million. The other major item was real estate taxes, obviously in July and August. Uh, primarily August, we, we received the bulk of, bulk of our real estate taxes that we're going to receive in this first semester of the year. Um, we received $6.2 million. And if you look at all each of the funds, um, we're between 95 and 97 percent of what we budgeted for this, this first uh, collection in the first half of the year. Um, I know that in September we've received an additional $100,000 uh, in, in real estate taxes. So that that 95 to 97 percent number is going to continue to increase um, over the next couple of months. Um, expenditures for the month were five and a half million dollars. Uh, again, working cash transfer of two million dollars is an expenditure to the working cash fund. That was the major item, and then 1.8 million dollars in in work on the project um, on the on the west side of golf that was either in the capital projects fund or the life safety fund. Hey Tim, when you do this next time, just uh, it would help me out if I'm comparing apples to apples. So like the life safety and the construct the capital projects and we keep those separate just to see how we're tracking the normal course of business and, you know we're at, we've gotten revenue of this we're spending this amount you know what I mean I think that would help out a lot like you do before we get capital and con and, con and uh, life safety you would like say here's a percentage of what we are you know what I mean that okay. would help out I think okay. um, our operating fund balance at the end of August uh, a little over 20 million dollars there were some questions. One of the questions that came up was on the um, page 44, which is the, the expenditure report. Uh, it shows a budget of $1.8 million, $1.9 million in life safety funds. And the question was, is that a correct amount? It is because a number of the items that are being done across the street, the, 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 the demolition of the building, for example, was done before we passed the life safety bond. So the, the, the cost for the building is coming out of capital projects. It's not coming out of life safety. Um, the life safety expenditures are for the field lighting, the track, the fence, and the roofing that was done. And then part of the expenditure is for the construction manager and the architect. Um, beyond this project, we still have about $5.2 million in additional life safety work that has to be done based on the 10-year life safety survey. So. Uh, There was a question with on a, on a number of, of the pages. Uh, page 50, as an example, shows um, a total budget amount that, that is different than on, on the DCR report versus what was approved by the board in September. The reason being that the changes that we made, and we talked about this last month or at the September board meeting, there were changes between the August budget that you received and the final budget that you received in September. We make various changes as we get more information available. Um, those changes were not incorporated into these financial statements. They will be incorporated into the September financial statements. Um, there's a question with regard to the, the IMRF and the Social Security levies. Um, the amounts that, that are being uh, put in, into uh, page 55 that are being put into each of those accounts by the treasurer's office are, are, are significantly different than what was budgeted. If, if you look at uh, the two levies combined, we're at about 95% of what we budgeted. It's just a matter of how he allocated that. Um, and, and the reason there's a difference is because of those few years where we didn't levy in the uh, IMRF fund, we just levied in the Social Security fund based on what had come up in, in an IMRF audit. So that's something that I have to discuss with him to see 
why he allocated the money in that respect, in that way. And I asked the other question, I've asked this a bunch of times. I, I, just, I find it, I don't understand how we can do it wrong. Well, I mean, the, doesn't the, how does the county give the money to them? Isn't it based on the levy? I mean, does the county just give a lump sum that he has to allocate, or does the county do it based on each portion of the levy? Do the county know? just gives him a lump sum. Okay. And he has to allocate it. So we're and, at his whim. Of and how one he of the, the problems in the past was in the bond and interest fund. And I think we talked about this last year. I said that I had actually budgeted in, in reverse order. This yeah, is something but you fixed it this year. Yeah, this year it's fixed. But now we have this issue in IMRF and Social Security. And, and that's. As I say, that's based on the, the levies that went through uh, after we had that audit from MRF. So I have to discuss that. Uh, there was a question on page 70 with regard to the expenditures, um, the supply account for the, for the football program. And I think there were some additional expenditures there just based on the fact that there were additional students that came out for football and that we had to, we had to spend more money on terms of equipment for those students. Um, page 88, there was a question with regard to the, the payment that we made on the activity bus, uh, budgeted at $12,000. The, the payment uh, in July actually was 11970 We make an annual payment on that, oh. so there won't be any other expenditures in that account. And then there was also some questions with regard to the some of the adjustments we made between capital projects and, and life safety. Um, and I, I had to take a look at those those entries that we made, moving money back and forth. And, and I'll report out on that at the next board meeting. Any other questions for Tim? I have one simple one, if you don't know the answer now. Okay. On page 92. 92 of the packet? Yes, and it, it's just kind of a what is it? Uh, it's in the account 60, the 2530. So in that group, it's one, two, three, four, five up. It says miscellaneous professional services. Like, what would that include on the building? Right there? So it's the 2530, 52, 16, 50, 813. That would include the engineering costs. We have a contract with Oz Engineering for $37,000. Um, it's just those types of expenditures that, that aren't part of the, the bid packages. It's not part of the cost that we're paying to the construction manager, to the architect, it's other professional services. It's like we had to do asbestos have. abatement or we had to hire surveying. But is that stuff for the life safety or is that normal every day? No, it's all it's no. in fund sixty, so it's all related That's to capital improvements cap and life safety. Okay. okay. <clears throat> fund sixty is related to all of our capital improvements and life safety work. Okay. Okay. Anything additional? No, no it's just going once. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll next move to visitors' comments. The Board of Education welcomes and encourages the participation of its citizens in the business of the high school district. There are two points in the meeting where visitor comments are scheduled. Citizens are welcome to raise questions or make comments at either one. Comments will be limited to three minutes per individual and cannot be combined. Please note the Board of Education will not answer questions or engage in dialogue during these comments. If anyone would li like additional time to address the board, such a request should be submitted in writing 48 hours before the meeting to the superintendent. So at this point in time, is there anyone on this side would like to speak? Okay, seeing none, anyone on this side would like to speak? 